Um, so hello everyone. Uh, maybe a little bit uh, at the beginning, uh, a little bit about us. Um, so we are early stage VC in a longevity space. Uh, uh, we are completely deployed from our first fund. So we actually invested in 40 companies in this space. Um, and all of these companies are doing well. Uh, we, we even got the first IPO. Maybe someone uh, know the company uh, Genflow Biosciences. They uh, IPO'd on the London Think Exchange uh, this January. And uh, we have our first uh, unicorn in our portfolio. It's an Israeli company, Westu. Um, and um, most importantly, we are not just uh, investors. We are also a venture builder, which I'll explain a little bit later. So you all know why we why is in longevity important, and uh, uh, it was uh, mentioned before me that uh, it's important to educate, you know, the the environment, educate other investors. And I would like to highlight one point here. Maybe someone uh, is already uh, aware about that, but there is a recent publication from Professor Andrew Scott, uh, together with uh, David Sinclair. Um, where they calculated the uh, economic benefits uh, coming from targeting aging. Uh, the paper was uh, published uh, and uh, was cal the calculation was made for the US market. And what they uh, came with is a uh, realization that uh, if uh, we manage to expand health spend, and now this is over, you know, the, uh, the, the active and healthy part of our life, by 10 years, so it will come with an uh, economic benefit of 367 trillions of US dollars just in the US economy. And that's an you know, astronomical number, and it's important to spread this uh, and you know, make everyone aware that it's actually framed uh, the future opportunity here. The number is not coming just from savings, like in a three, um, for healthcare cost or pension cost or uh, where social cost, it's also coming from a, uh, increasing or expanding the productivity age, you know, the, from the natural productivity, uh, which uh, comes from people staying in health, in good health, not limited by, uh, you know, physically or cognitively. So that's very important to, to know. But uh, I would like to share with you uh, kind of four pillars or four priorities uh, for we are looking for when we are evaluating our companies or investments. Uh, so first of all, it's timing. Uh, then there is a specific diversification strategy. Uh, we have a so-called de risk strategy, and we are active investors, so we provide support. We consider these four priorities as very important, especially in uh, this stage of early stage investment and in early stage of the you know the longevity industry itself. So first of all, a little bit about timing. And you maybe recognize some of some uh, some uh, points or topics uh, Aaron was talking about uh, already. But basically, uh, what we are looking here at is a. Uh, a comparison between a linear and exponential expectations or the development. And uh, we made like a more sophisticated calculations to look at uh, various trends, uh, like especially trends coming from uh, underlying technologies uh, like uh, artificial intelligence or genome sequencing or various um, imaging technologies. And, you know, these technologies are really advancing in an exponential uh, rate, uh, which is clearly seen on the, the left side of the picture uh, on the, the cost for genome sequencing. And you, you, all know, you, are, you are all aware about that, that the price originally started at 100 millions of US dollars, eventually you know, uh, goes down into something like 100 dollars uh, in these days. Um, so, but what actually is happening when you combine all of these uh, various trends all together, 
they create a compounding effect. And this compounding effect is the main driver of a, a you know, so-called megatrend longevity. Um, so where we are now? So we are at the phase where these expectations coming from longevity uh, are still like a little bit higher uh, than uh, the available reality. So we know what our company is working on, so we, we, can, we can see what is uh, uh, in front of us, but uh, you know, people uh, has no access to that. So that's, that's called like an uncovered investment advantage. Uh, the, you know, part of this picture uh, is, is, is too complicated for everyone. Uh, it's too complicated for general investors. It's too complicated for non-scientists. So the current uh, phase of the, you know, of the development comes with this uh, may, maybe limited uh, valuations or uh, higher level barrier for entrance of the new investors. But if you overcome this uh, disadvantage, uh, if you have a qualified team, if you manage to understand what is, what is really happening here, so you can enter with great advantage, which in turn uh, can return uh, at the moment when we will see kind of a opposite scenario, which we can explain like a overhype or like a, uh, the situation where uh, the, you know, this investor will see that the uh, train is leaving and everyone will want to jump in. So this is a typical scenario in many uh, other industries, especially from a tech space, when at a certain point of time, uh, these assets are basically overvalued. And you know, it's this exponential development is not infinite, it's a part of the S-curve. So everyone who knows the investing of to the S-curve, uh, you can recognize that this is the phase where we are with longevity. Um, now to the second priority or the, the, you know, the, 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 the important factors we are looking for. Uh, it's a diversification, but it's not a diversification uh, in terms of the, you know, the financial uh, structure. It's rather uh, diversification to catch the full spectrum of the longevity potential and uh, be within this hyper trends or uh, mega trends. So we invest in three sectors, generally diagnostics, biotech, and enabling technologies. Um, in diagnostics, that's you know, very important priority because uh, uh, we need to be able to measure what we want to improve. So especially aging biomarkers and focus on as much as close to real time measurement. So the holy grail in the diagnostics is to to wear the, you know, the, the device where you can sense various biomarkers in, I mean, biological biomarkers in real time. That will reopen or open the completely new perspective uh, how to improve our health. Uh, the biggest part of our portfolio, you know, these 40 companies, uh, is uh, coming from like a traditional biotech, meaning therapeutics or therapies, uh, where we have this uh, uh, subsector approach. So we, we divided that uh, into 12 subsectors, uh, and we are systematically covering these subsectors, uh, and we even have an uh, uh, additional dimension uh, where we are looking for short term, mid term, and long term solutions in every of these subsectors. With 40 companies in portfolio, we we haven't covered everything, and this is why we are raising second fund, which is uh, expected to be 50 to 100 million, and we, we hope that we can then invest in maybe uh, 40 more companies to have this fully covered. And the third part is uh, called enabling tech, uh, which you can imagine that enabling means the, the research enabling, like AI, uh, we have a company, uh, Solaris, uh, uh, which is uh, developing the, the, the system for um, computational, like insulin uh, modeling of uh, protein and molecular interactions, very successful. Uh, but it's not just for research, it's also for 
you know, commercialization effort. So we are looking uh, for platforms and the ways how these uh, advances and solutions can be deployed into, uh, you know, to populations. Because uh, eventually our mission is to make this uh, globally uh, accessible and affordable. Uh, the third uh, part or third priority is uh, uh, the way how we evaluate, you know, the, the, how we are looking at the potential of certain of the, the, these companies. And our highest priority uh, is to look at the science. Uh, maybe someone else is the highest priority in team. Obviously, team is very important. Uh, but uh, uh, first, what we are looking for is, a, is a, not just a good science, but a science or product which is uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, capable uh, to, to deal with uh, other alternative approaches. Uh, because we have an advantage uh, seeing hundreds of other companies. So we kind of know what is happening, who is working on what. And it happens many times that uh, we can see a great team, we can see a good science and great product, but we know that there is someone else who is working on an alternative solution, and that solution is going to be maybe 10 times cheaper or 10 times more available. So this is the, the, the reason why we consider the, 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 the science and the product as a first criterion which needs to be passed through our scientific team before we can look at uh, the other uh, due diligence uh, factors like team and obviously the, the, the scenarios for commercialization and exits and so on. And we are happy to have a great scientific team inside led by Jyoti Devakumar. Um, uh, but uh, having that 40 companies in portfolio and their scientific teams uh, in, our, in our group or uh, in our cycles, so we have access to hundreds of uh, more scientists where we can discuss uh, particular topics or questions when we are evaluating some new science. And the fourth factor or fourth priority is, uh, as I mentioned, the support, you know, the proactive support of our companies. Um, and this is somehow connected to our uh, activity of uh, being a venture builder, uh, because we build a group of uh, so-called longevity ecosystem companies. Uh, there are five or six companies. And I would like to mention that just the one here, which is called Healthy Longevity Clinic. And it's not like a uh, yet another clinic. Uh, it's a special uh, institution focused on early stage human clinical trials. Because the problem is that all companies um, even they are selected to focus on uh, some principles of aging, the solving the aging problems. Uh, they need to follow standard regulatory paths. You know, they need to have a proxy disease. Uh, they need to uh, be targeted, uh, I mean, focused on, on that. So it's kind of hard to keep their focus on aging and, you know, make it to the human and not just be fixed on certain specific disease. So this is why we developed this, uh, uh, the company and institution, and uh, we have a, uh, we have a uh, center in, uh, in Europe and second center in Florida, and we have the subsidiary in the Bahamas when we got the first ever uh, framework approval pro for human, early stage human clinical trials for aging, focused on aging. So we are, right now, we are preparing the series of clinical trials with our companies which uh, will allow them uh, you know, to follow that aging path uh, in parallel to their standard uh, disease-focused approval path in the US or in, in Europe. So that's very important support for our uh, companies. So uh, just to give you a, uh, the, the example of the mix of uh, our portfolio companies, uh, you can see uh, there are a couple of uh, very exciting ones, uh, like, for example, Matrix. Uh, I believe the Matrix will be presenting to you uh, after uh, this launch. Or a company uh, 
uh, Cyfox, uh, which is uh, the example of the, this potentially uh, real-time uh, uh, diagnostic device where you can imagine the variable uh, capable to sensing your proteins in real time and online. So that's the that's very exciting uh, potential and technology. Thank you. <laughs>